Today, a tsunami warning caused evacuations along the southern Oregon coast after a 7.0 magnitude earthquake struck off the northern coast of California. The Pacific Northwest, a region where jagged cliffs plunge into cold blue waters, ancient forests cloak the landscape, and storm-wrought cities sit perched along a coastline sculpted by time and tectonic drama, hides a profound secret just offshore. From Seattle's vibrant harbor to the rugged shores of Oregon, cascading south to the remote coves of Northern California, these lands are stitched together by beauty and by risk. What many don't realize is that beneath these tranquil waves lies one of the greatest natural threats in North America. Recently, scientists monitoring a network of deep sea sensors off the Cascadia coastline were greeted by a mystery. Not the expected towering waves, not a tremor, a staple of the region's seismic lore. Instead, they detected signals in the water column, distinctive tsunami pulse patterns typically tied to major underwater earthquakes. Yet this time, no quake had shaken the ground. So what happens when tsunami alarms blare, but the earth itself is still? Could our understanding of coastal risk be incomplete, missing invisible dangers lurking beneath the silt and salt? In this video, we dive headfirst into the unknown, the enigmatic tsunami signals off the Pacific Northwest. A reminder that disaster here might not always come with warning tremors. Smash subscribe and like if you want to stay a step ahead of the world's mysteries, because the next turning point in the story of this coastline may be closer than we think. Ready to walk a region where every headland, every marsh, every bustling port sits on the knife's edge between serenity and sudden upheaval. Let's begin. Chapter 1. Unexplained Tsunami Pulse Patterns Picture midnight on a remote Oregon beach. Rooftop crab pots and the hum of trawlers in Newport's harbor fill the salty air. Suddenly, Offshore tsunami detection buoys start transmitting a low, rhythmic signal, matching the early profile of a tsunami surge. On land, stillness. Seismic networks from Cape Flattery to Eureka record nothing, a total absence of shaking. Yet there it is in the data, a wave pattern moving shoreward, detected by buoys 40 miles offshore. Water levels shift by a few centimeters, enough to trip automated alarms at the Nanus Observatory in Seattle. Engineers quickly review every component for fault, but the signals repeat, steady and unmistakable. How could a tsunami-like signal be generated with no known quake? Could the infamous Cascadia subduction zone be stirring in ways invisible to our current instruments? Experts pore over the evidence. Submarine landslides, methane gas releases, and even mysterious deep sea currents are considered. But sensors are checked, code is vetted, and meteorological input is ruled out. The cause is undeniably physical. Something has displaced a massive volume of water out on the continental shelf, yet there are no corresponding disturbances at the surface. Some propose rare deep water eddies, but the regularity and sharpness of the pulse challenge this. The mystery persists. What powerful but silent force is moving the water? We are only at the threshold of this investigation. Chapter two. Cascadia Fault, a sleeping giant. Often called the quiet threat, the Cascadia subduction zone is a geological boundary stretching over 600 miles from Vancouver Island to Northern California, running eerily close to the populated Pacific Northwest coast. Just off the Olympic Peninsula, the seafloor plunges into a trench riddled with shifting faults and methane seeps. This zone marks the intersection of the North American plate and the Juan de Fuca plate, a meeting capable of immense destruction. Modern scanning techniques reveal subaquatic scars, evidence of seafloor slumps, landslides, and past tectonic activity. Muddy escarpments along the continental slope hint at cycles of violence invisible on the peaceful surface above. This fault harbors the potential for earthquakes approaching magnitude 9.0. Such an event would reshape portions of the coastline and produce tsunamis that race toward cities like Astoria, Newport, Crescent City, and Seattle's bustling waterfront. But the strange signals of 2025 defied previous understanding. There was neither ground movement nor the characteristic seismic noise that usually accompanies tectonic shifts. Historical records reference orphan tsunamis, devastating waves for which no local earthquake was ever recorded. Japanese documents describe tsunamis on their coast in the early 1700s, connected by scientists to a Cascadia event 
confirming that these waters can carry waves without notice. Could we be witnessing a new form of threat? A modern echo of ancient, unwarned disasters? The silence of the Cascadia Fault is unsettling, because even when it appears dormant, the tectonic stresses persist below, storing energy for potential future release. Chapter 3 Subsea Landslides – The Invisible Catastrophe Tsunamis aren't always born of earthquakes. Sometimes they begin as underwater landslides, sudden cascades of sediment and rock down the steep continental slope. In 2025, as scientists examined sonar maps beyond Coos Bay, they noted a fresh channel, evidence that a large mass of sediment had recently slid into the depths. This wasn't just a minor slump. Debris fanned out 12 miles wide across the seafloor, indicating a significant collapse. Coinciding with this, Deep-sea pressure sensors detected an abrupt, negative spike, almost as if the ocean briefly sank, then surged. No earthquake warning was issued, and beachgoers reported nothing unusual. The cause of the event was invisible from shore, but data clearly pointed to a massive movement of sediment. Professional marine geologists like Dr. Emily Hayes have studied how these undersea collapses can sometimes be triggered not by earthquakes but by slow tectonic shifts or the destabilization of gas hydrates. These landslides can displace huge volumes of water, generating tsunamis even when the land above remains calm. Landslide-induced tsunamis are not just theoretical. In 1929, the Grand Banks landslide off Newfoundland produced a tsunami that devastated coastal communities. Though less frequent than quake-generated tsunamis, these events are likely underreported, especially in regions with limited historical records. Could submarine landslides along the Cascadia margin be more common than once thought? and responsible for unexplained tsunami signals. Their potential for destruction, even in the absence of seismic shaking, is now a key focus for scientists. Chapter 4 Immute Eruptions – Nature's Undersea Forces What if sudden eruptions of methane gas trapped beneath the seafloor can explosively disturb the ocean, mimicking the onset of a tsunami? In 2025, Remotely operated vehicles observed shimmers of rising methane bubbles on the deep seabed off southern Oregon. These methane seeps are known along the continental margin, where gas locked in icy hydrate layers periodically escapes as pressure and temperature conditions change. When large quantities of methane are released suddenly, the water above can be temporarily displaced, producing subtle, but real, waves. Some marine geochemists speculate that if enough gas is released at once, a pressure pulse strong enough to register on tsunami sensors could be produced. Sediment rearrangement and disturbed seafloor patterns have been documented where significant methane release has taken place. Still, most gas releases are gradual and dispersed. While sudden blowouts are possible, their ability to consistently create tsunami-like waves, similar to those detected in 2025, remains under investigation. Nevertheless, the presence of vast gas hydrate fields along Cascadia Slope means that episodic eruptions cannot be fully ruled out as a contributing factor to unexplained ocean disturbances. How often do these undersea gas events occur, and what risk do they pose in combination with other geological processes? This is a growing area of study, one that scientists are racing to understand as new sensor data comes online. Chapter 5 Orphan Tsunamis in Pacific Northwest History Coastal communities of Washington and Oregon remember storms, floods, and the ever-present prospect of tsunami. Yet history whispers of even stranger events. Orphan tsunamis, destructive waves that arrived in local harbors with no felt earthquake. Evidence of these events persists in the Pacific Northwest landscape. Buried forests, stands of drowned trees found in tidal marshes, mark violent, rapid changes in water level long before written records. Japanese archives from the early 18th century document a tsunami arriving seemingly out of nowhere. Modern research links driftwood, sediment layers, and even indigenous oral traditions from the Pacific Northwest to the same event. In more recent times, sediment cores extracted near Crescent City reveal layers of sand deposited well outside typical storm or flood ranges, suggesting sudden, powerful wave action. Analysis of these core samples points to ocean-driven inundations not correlated with known earthquakes. Orphan tsunamis may result from underwater landslides, volcanism, or distant seismic events. What makes them especially dangerous is the lack of warning. 
traditional earthquake sensors remain silent, leaving coastal residents with little or no advance notice. This region's written and natural history points to a long relationship with these silent waves. Understanding their causes and heeding the warning signs from past landscapes is now a vital part of regional disaster planning. Chapter 6 Fault Creep – The Invisible Earthquake The Cascadia subduction zone isn't just a site of sudden, catastrophic motion. Some scientists now observe that portions of the fault may experience aseismic creep, minute, slow sliding of tectonic plates without the dramatic jolt of an earthquake. Seafloor GPS beacons off Grays Harbor, along with other precise seismic instruments, have registered extremely slow movements, up to a few centimeters per year in recent years. While not immediately destructive, this gradual shift is double-edged. On one hand, it may help relieve tectonic tension, reducing the frequency or magnitude of major earthquakes in certain segments. On the other, it can concentrate strain on adjacent parts of the fault, setting the stage for future large events. These slow movements can also subtly rearrange stress fields in the crust and occasionally lead to the kind of deep, undetectable slip that could trigger secondary hazards like landslides. A seismic creep is largely invisible, but it's important in how stress is distributed along fault zones like Cascadia. In rare cases, it might lead to slip events sufficient to move the seafloor, possibly contributing to anomalous ocean signals. Researchers remain vigilant, studying whether these slow slips coincide with unusual water movement, and if so, whether they could be responsible for some portion of unexplained tsunami-like pulses detected offshore. Chapter 7. Offshore Technology. Sensors versus the Unknown. To protect Pacific Coast communities, a network of high-tech ocean sensors, buoys, pressure gauges, undersea cables, watch for any sign of tsunami. The DART system in particular forms a real-time web from British Columbia to California, feeding data directly to emergency operations centers. Advancements in satellite monitoring and artificial intelligence continue to refine disaster warnings. Yet, as seen in 2025, even these advanced instruments can be left perplexed. The ocean's complexity can outstrip what even our best technology can immediately interpret. Anomalous readings trigger debate among experts. Are they harmless noise, genuine warnings, or as yet unidentified natural phenomena? In an era of data, the limits of detection still matter. Billions of dollars have been invested, yet the ocean can generate signals that defy definitive explanation. Emergency managers sometimes face the difficult choice of risking a false alarm or potentially missing a disaster. The pursuit continues. More robust networks, improved algorithms, and international collaboration may help close the gap. But as of now, the ocean holds secrets that not even the most sophisticated machines can easily decode. Chapter 8 Lessons from the Other Edge – Connecting Global Dots The Pacific Northwest isn't alone. Around the world, similar coastlines have faced silent tsunami threats. In 1998, Papua New Guinea suffered a devastating tsunami, triggered not by a classic powerful earthquake, but an undersea landslide activated by a relatively minor tremor. More recently, research has suggested that tsunami earthquakes, earthquakes that transmit little surface shaking but create large seafloor displacement. Scientists now analyze sediment layers, tsunami deposits, and historical accounts globally, searching for the fingerprints of non-traditional tsunami sources. The Pacific Northwest's risk is increasingly being understood in an international context, learning from places that have faced tragedy and using their insights to refine local hazard maps. The work is ongoing. Core samples from Puget Sound in California, remote sensing, and cooperation with global experts inform risk models and preparedness. Each shared lesson brings us closer to deciphering the hidden threats of tectonic margins. Chapter 9. Redrawing the Risk Map as understanding grows, new risk maps are emerging for the Pacific Northwest. Rather than focusing solely on major earthquakes, scientists and planners now incorporate data on underwater landslides, methane seeps, and slow fault slip. Demonstrates that danger zones extend beyond those perched directly above the fault. Instead, the greatest hazards may concentrate at low-lying beaches adjacent to ancient canyons or unstable slopes locations once presumed safe. Communities along rivers, estuaries, and open sloughs are now being recognized as vulnerable not only to classic quake-driven tsunamis, 
but also to waves generated by undersea landslides or gas releases. This new understanding is gradually reshaping disaster drills, emergency communication, and regional building codes. The message is clear. Readiness requires not only listening for earthquakes, but also reading signs from the ocean itself. The story isn't just about the ground shaking, it's about how water responds and how communities can adapt. Time to listen to the deep. So what truly lies behind the mysterious tsunami signals pulsing across Cascadia's waters with no earthquake claiming responsibility? Whether triggered by silent landslides, shifting plates, or undersea gas eruptions, one reality remains. The Pacific Northwest's stretches of wild, storm-tossed coast are not immune to disaster from the deep. Science continues to uncover and interpret these mysteries, but nature's warning signs are sometimes subtle. The region's buried forests, storm-altered beaches, and faintly resounding legends all remind us that unexpected tsunamis have shaped this land before. Preparedness now means more than earthquake drills. It means understanding every possible source of hazard and building resilience against all forms of coastal risk. The next major event may not start with a jolt, but with a surge, a wave written in signals few on land can read. So what do you think? Is the biggest danger hidden in landslides, erupting gas, or the slow slip of tectonic plates? Do you live on the Pacific coast? Share your thoughts, your stories, and your readiness tips in the comments below. Remember to like, subscribe, and share for more explorations into the unknown. Until next time, stay vigilant, listen to the sea, and stay curious.